Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and in today's lesson, which is part one of a two-part series, I'm going to respond to viewer requests who said, Danny, is there an easy way for me to be able to update a cell based upon the name of a worksheet tab? So if the worksheet tab changes, I want the value in the cell to change. So this is part one. I'm going to be able to capture a worksheet name. In other words, the worksheet name could be January and have that placed inside a cell. For example, C1. In order to do that, in order to capture a worksheet name inside a cell, what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom function in Excel. Now, creating a custom function, writing a custom function requires that we do it inside the Visual Basic Editor. And it's easier than you would think. One distinction between a custom function and a built-in function. Now, a built-in function would be, for example, sum or average or min or max. With a custom function, unless we add a particular line of code, which I'm going to show you, the value or the return of the function will not automatically or not dynamically update unless we go in and manually uh, update it. Or if we have the line of code, then it will dynamically update. Part two, which I'll film for tomorrow, will do the opposite. I'm not confusing the issue right now. Let's take a look at how I've set this up. I have three worksheets over here. I have Jan, Feb, and March. So for January, February, and March, and I have identical values in them. The important thing for when I set this up is I wanted to have formulas for calculating gross profit percentage, formula for calculating gross profit. What I want to be able to do is in cell C1, I want to have C1 be able to pick up the name of the worksheet. So in this case, pick up Jan. But if I change this to be, let's say, January 2010, I want cell C1 to update. All right, in order to do this, I'm going to open up another view of this worksheet, which will include the Visual Basic Editor. Now, this can be intimidating to anybody who has never encountered Visual Basic or never peered behind the scene of a macro. Visual Basic Editor, and we can open this up several different ways. One easy way to do that is with the keyboard shortcut Alt Function 11. We have the Visual Basic Editor, and I'm showing two elements of it. Over here in the left side pane, I'm showing what's called the Project Explorer. That's important, and if the Project Explorer is not on view, go to the View menu, and we want to open up the Project Explorer, or use this keyboard shortcut, Control-R. Why is it important that we have the Project Explorer? Because notice over here, this is the name of the worksheet that I'm opening, that I'm working on, but all of the coding that I'm going to use for this custom function must be inserted inside a module. Now we must create a module. So the way we insert a module is go to the Insert menu and Insert a Module. And then we open up the Code pane. So the Code pane, if that's not showing, go to the View menu and open up Code or use the keyboard shortcut F7, Function 7. All right, now let's break down this custom function. What we do is we begin by writing the word function. And I recommend that you write it in all lowercase because when you hit enter or click down, if the initial F hasn't uh, capitalized, then you'll know you have a misspelling. And frankly, I do this all the time. When we enter our first line, we'll also get in the end of the function. All right, so the function is how we begin, and then we name the function. So in this case, just as I would with any other function, I need to give it a name. In this case, I'm calling it sheet name. Now, it's not necessary that I write it in all upper caps. I chose to do it. Now, remember with a built-in function such as sum or average, we see a left and a right parentheses. So in this case, the first variation or the first version of this is going to include an argument. I'm going to have another custom function called sheet name 2, which you'll notice down here has a left and a right parentheses, but no arguments in it. So RNG is a shorthand. I'm going to create a variable called range. So RNG is a shorthand for a variable, which is going to be the data type as a range. 
the result of the sheet name function is going to be a string, in other words, a text string. So whatever text we have down here in our worksheet tab, that's going to be the result of our custom function. Now these next two lines, notice that they have apostrophes in front of them, and also notice that they are in a different font. They're in a green font. These are uh, optional, but I highly recommend comments. So when you want to add a comment, begin the line with an apostrophe. Anytime you begin a line with an apostrophe, Excel doesn't consider that code. It says, oh, these are just notes that Danny's writing to himself. So a month from now, when I come back and say, well, what is this custom function called sheet name? It's a custom Excel function that I wrote that will place the worksheet name inside a cell in the worksheet. All right, that's really simple. All right, now here is our first line of code. Here's our function name, sheet name, and we're defining it equals RNG. Remember that variable that I had up there? Period, parent, period, name. Don't worry about it. Just stop your screen, write down or copy this code over here. It's really very, very simple. And again, when I'm writing after the periods, I always write in lower case. When I click away from it, if I don't get an initial cap, I know I've got the wrong name or I misspelled it. So sheet name equals the range variable, period, parent, period, name. That's all you need. Now, remember I told you that unless we add a line of code that our, the results of our functions will not automatically be updated. So in my first run through here, I'm going to disable this. The way that we can disable a line of code to test a, a, you know, a, a, a different view of it is to place an apostrophe. So now Excel is treating that as a comment. So now I'm ready to insert that function equals and all functions customer built in begin with the equal sign sheet name and I'm writing it in lower case but notice that in Excel 2007 Excel 2010 we have what's called function autocomplete now this is going to require an argument the argument means just click on a cell a cell is a range that's all you need to know and then remember to use a right parentheses to close that off control enter and there you go so now I have the name of the function if I come over here and I want to do the same thing equal sheet name left uh, parentheses opens up it doesn't matter what cell just click on a cell which is your range and then control enter and there you go now if I were to come back here in the January and remember I disabled in the code the dynamic updating so if I change this to if I spell it out January is uh, 2010 notice that my function my custom function doesn't op update automatically the way we can manually update it is to just click here in the formula bar and then click the enter key so now it has updated now let's go back and view the code and now what we want to do is I want to then remove the comment over here by removing the asterisk and now this is going to be active so let's apply this over here in February so now just notice I have FEB up here for that custom function but remember I've applied the application volatile true so if I change this to be watch what happens when I hit enter now you see how that updated automatically so that line of code is really important let me just again reveal that so if you want your functions that you create as custom functions to be able to update whenever there's a change in the worksheet, write this line of code, application dot volatile space true. Now, I have a variation on this function. And by the way, I didn't create this function. I got this from John Walkenbach's book on Excel 2007 uh, formulas. And I'll show you a screenshot of the cover. That's a fantastic book, fantastic resource. This is going to be similar to the sheet name function. However, in this case, the way we write it, it doesn't require any arguments. So you see, unlike the first, variate, or the first version of this, we don't have to have any arguments in here. And the code that we write in here here's the name of the function we write sheet name which is the name of the function equals application dot caller dot parent dot name I'm not going to give you a long explanation of that just again freeze your video here and just write this down in, in a notepad somewhere application 
dot caller dot parent dot name and again what I want to do over here is I initially had the application volatile true line uh, entered in as a comment so now I've activated that and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use equals sheet name 2 so sheet name 2 does not require any argument so I just have to supply a right parentheses and there you go it's updated automatically. Now just before I close this out let me show you how we can really create a very very dynamic update over here. So in other words I want to be able to capture the formulas that I've uh, added and I want to have it put into three additional months. So I'm going to click over here three times to add in three new sheets and I'll call them successively April, May, and June. All right, now, what I want to do is I first want to be able to group the worksheets. So I want to select all of the worksheets. Hold down, or click on the first worksheet, hold down Shift, and click on the last worksheet. Notice that I'm now working in a group. So now, the next step is I want to highlight all of the cells, including all of the formulas. And what I want to do is come over here to the Home tab of the ribbon, and over here in the editing group, the fill drop down menu, I want to fill across the worksheets. And I want to fill both the formats and the contents. So I select all, click OK, and now ungrouped by just clicking any other cell. And now you'll see that April has the formula put in there automatically. You'll see that May has that formula put in there and June. So there's a terrific way that you can capture a worksheet name, a worksheet tab name inside a cell. And this is part one of the two-part series. I mentioned that I took this code from this book, John Walkerback has some fantastic books on Excel and Excel VBA. So in his Excel 2007 formulas, that's where I got the information. For part two, which I'll film for tomorrow, I'm going to be taking a tip for writing a macro from uh, Bill Jelen, Mr. Excel's Gurus Gone Wild. And I remind you that I have my five DVD series, The 50 Best Tips, and I'll look for you in part two tomorrow.